We're back with investment banking programming per usual. Today's topic, how to break in from blank into investment banking. I know the title says big four audit. For a disclaimer, that's more for clickbait kind of, not to have you guys click on an unrelevant video. This video is gonna cover mostly breaking into banking if you're doing something else. An important warning slash disclaimer I need to make is I went into banking straight out of undergrad. I did the typical junior year summer internship and full-time transition. So I personally don't have experience in transitioning from a full-time position into banking from something else. I also understand that a lot of times the answers that I give on this channel from other videos and on comments is typically the best thing to do is get an MBA after you do things outside of the finance industry outside of banking. But this is gonna cover various thoughts that I have had, various experiences that I've seen from those around me that are currently in banking that have come from a different background and didn't necessarily get an MBA or got an MBA to beef up their resume, but in my perspective, wasn't necessarily required for them to transition over. I think the most common way I've seen people break in into investment banking, and this might be a cop-out answer, and maybe not the most pertinent answer, from other forms of investment banks. Those that may have had roles in the back office part of investment banks or commercial side of investment banks, but they have the finance knowledge, they've underwritten debt before, they've worked with financial statements before, but they want more of an M&A role, a restructuring role, a more traditional investment banking role, but they have the finance background, their story is straight, and they just want to transition into an IB role. I've seen multiple cases of these around me, typically associates who've had experience in other banking-esque roles, but not specifically investment banking, and they've transitioned into investment banking. So the broad banking sphere. On top of that, I've also seen those that move up from smaller banks to bigger banks, and also seen the reverse of those that go from bigger banks to smaller banks, depending on what they want, what they've enjoyed about their previous experiences. Perhaps they want prestige, the name brand, or the reverse, they want a better lifestyle, a bigger input into what they're doing. Perhaps it's a location thing, they're in Chicago, but they want to be in New York. So movement within investment banks that I won't go into detail because it's obvious their skill sets almost directly transfer, but that also happens. A lot of these transitions from what I've seen is typically through people they know. So the finance industry is weirdly a small place. People know each other. So if they know someone in bank A and they know that the bank A is hiring, they say, hey, put in a good word for me. Or do you guys know if they're hiring? There's even referral bonuses amongst bankers. So banks are referring each other. Banks or sending people to others. They're also using these recruiting firms, headhunting firms, and saying, we need experienced analysts, we need experienced associates, so on and so forth, trading between like Pokemon cards. Next grouping of people, I guess, is the crux of this video, the crux of this title, but big four audit, big four accounting firms. Accounting also has a lot of overlap with banking. I know that I've covered in different videos in the past that a lot of the accounting work, the hardcore major accounting work, we actually lend out that work to big accounting firms like PwC and EY. But if you have this strong accounting background, you know how financial statements work, you know the ins and outs of financial accounting, it's very helpful in an investment banking role, especially at the analyst associate level, even at the MD level where you want to understand how working capital works, where capital expenditures is going to affect the valuation of this company. Banks really value the experience that you have at accounting firms, especially if you have an auditing background or a Q of E, quality of earnings development background. Those are very transferable skills and I've seen multiple bankers that are bankers currently come from those backgrounds and some transition directly from having that role into a banking role, even without an MBA. If anything, I see a lot of those individuals that have the accounting background, some of them having three to five years of accounting, be very strong candidates and strong bankers and their technical acumen and know things that some bankers that have always been bankers not know because they're used to giving that accounting responsibility out to the accounting firms that we hire as third parties. So long story short, I think if anything, having that accounting background is very good if you're considering a banking transition. I haven't seen this example that many times, but look Lawyers also try to become bankers. I think the work between lawyers and bankers also has some similarities in that both fields work really hard. A lot of it is about research and sitting on your butt and going through different things to get the right answer. I think a lot of lawyers work in M&A law and they see the merit of banking as they conduct due diligence on behalf of bankers, on behalf of the bankers' clients. Over time, they build the acumen and the experience over M&A and think, wow, this is actually really cool. Why don't I get over to that side and get it also done? As I always say in my videos, a lot of what bankers do, it's not necessarily about rocket science or you being brilliant, but the ability for you to grind hours at a time and junior lawyer working hours, from what I've heard from my lawyer friends, from those that are preparing to be lawyers, seem to be pretty similar, if not sometimes worse than banker hours. So if you have that strong lawyer background, you've been working hard, a JD definitely does not hurt and you're willing to put in some time on the side, maybe get an MBA. And I keep hesitating to make this MBA point because I don't want this video to be about the whole getting an MBA is the best thing to transitioning into investment banking thing. There's other videos that I've made 
covering those. I think that's more for recruiting purposes, but on a background standpoint, I think being a lawyer, there's definitely transferable skills and I'm sure having that legal understanding background will help in the long run because there's a lot of law related things that bankers deal with all the time. In a very similar light to lawyers, and I could already see the questions popping up, consulting is also highly relevant, in my opinion, into transferring into banking. I know a couple individuals that have transferred from consulting to banking. I actually know probably more people that have transferred from banking to consulting, but I think a lot of times, perhaps minus the finance and numbery part, there's a lot of overlap between the two roles. You're making presentations, you're working with data, you're working with clients, you're making the client look good, you're solving client problems. Obviously, I've never been a consultant. I've never really prepared for consulting interviews. I'm not fully aware of how different the two roles are. I know that the case study is a huge part of the consulting interview prep. However, I do understand that both roles work heavily with data, they're making presentations, they're adhering to clients, and I think those skills can definitely transfer over people who might be more finance inclined and looking to know how to raise capital, work with private equity, so on and so forth, might prefer banking after being in a couple of years of consulting and being focused on solving problems, answering questions on behalf of companies to the extent that I understand what consulting is about. Bottom line, consultants definitely also transition into banking and those skills are also highly transferable. I really didn't want to put this point in here, this final last point, because I don't like juicing out the same video and over and over again. And honestly, with investment banking, with anything that is career oriented, you can only say so much. A lot of what I talk about in these videos is from the comments below. I got this specific question about transitioning from big four audit, big four accounting to banking. This entire video is more so about transitioning from different roles to banking. I've covered the handful of roles that I've personally seen the most of transition over. Those from other banking, other finance backgrounds, auditors slash accountants that you guys asked about, and then lawyers and consultants, which I view as kind of the similar category as bankers, perhaps minus the finance part. But back to this last point that I've been hesitating, but I've also been hinting at throughout this entire video, deep relation to the many MBA related videos that I talked about, MBA, not NBA. Go Lakers, go Bulls. Please don't hate me for either of those things. But bottom line, regardless of what industry you're in, I think if your end goal is to be in investment banking, there is no better way to do it than get an MBA. If you couldn't get that banking job right out of college, MBA is the most optimal route, the most high probability likelihood choice that I've seen. But I'm wishing that this video is helpful for those that perhaps can't afford to do an MBA, whether it be time, money, or both, or think you have a pretty relevant skill set and all you need is to break that boundary, work on networking, and you have the relevant relevant credentials, you know you're smart enough, you know you can work hard enough, and you have good career experience that you could back up by telling them, hey, I have the grit, I've worked in a professional environment before, I need to get up to speed on the finance part, I've done my studying, but here's the experience, I hope this works. One interesting thing that I've seen very rarely, but a couple of times, is those that go back to banking from the buy side. I think these are people that realize after starting in banking, go to the buy side and coming back. There's a number of factors that can lead into this. One, the buy side is pretty saturated, perhaps they've calculated their risk return profile of themselves and realize a long-term career in banking makes much more sense than a long-term career on the buy side. There's less room for mobility, less spots on the top. There's always advisory, but capital funds can fail. I also think that there's those that actually love, love banking. They enjoy the fact that they're an advisor, that they're always mending with clients, and perhaps they don't wanna mess with their own money, and what they wanna do is advise clients till they retire, which are both completely logical. And third, and basically in relation to the first point with the risk return, there honestly might be better, secure, and maybe even more money in the long run if you stay in banking as opposed to on the buy side. If your investments just suck and they don't do well over time, advisory might have a better return for yourself personally than being stuck on the buy side. For those currently working in the various roles I've described, or perhaps not even in the roles that I described, but are considering one of those routes into banking or banking route, directly, or anyone just considering banking and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm screwed, I can never get in. I hope this video served as inspiration, aspiration, influence, since I'm an influencer, that you could spin anything into banking, but there are these relevant roles that I think make sense into going to banking, perhaps without needing to complete an MBA. And I've personally seen examples of those that have transitioned directly from those roles into banking without getting an MBA. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.